Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Finally. <laughs> finally, friends, after the disaster in Iowa, we have a clear and decisive winner, Seba, the standard poodle who won the best in show at Westminster. I'm not, I'm not surprised that she won. I mean, look at that grooming. <laughs> I am telling you, if he is serious about his run, Tom Steyer ought to steal her look. <laughs> nice haunches. Nice haunches. Now, last night, uh, we also got the results of the New Hampshire primary, and I'll tell you all about that yeah. in tonight's edition of... I have a plan for that. A progressive agenda. Donald Trump's worst nightmare. You're a lying dog faced pony soldier. I think they will end up being the losers. Yuri Road to the White House 2020. Winner Yuri! Now, the winner. <laughs> Witness me! The winner in the Granite State was Vermont Senator and man regretting picking a Jay-Z song at karaoke. <laughs> Not a word. Bernie Sanders. Bernie was gracious in his victory speech. Let me take this opportunity to thank the people of New Hampshire for a great victory tonight. The reason that we won tonight in New Hampshire, we won last week in Iowa, It's because of the hard work of so many volunteers. I want to thank my volunteers. <laughs> I want to thank the unpaid laborers who, oh my God, what have I become? <laughs> I'm a capitalist swine who benefits off the toil of the 99%. <laughs> I've become that which I most abhorred. I am the man now, let's stick it to me. Finishing a strong second was former South Bend mayor and birthday boy volunteering at the Magic Show. <laughs> wow. Pete Buttigieg. During his speech, uh, Mayor Pete gave Bernie a bit of a backhanded compliment. I admired Senator Sanders when I was a high school student. Ooh. <laughs> Subtly done. But it is true. Pete did actually admire Bernie in high school. He even wrote an essay about him that won what's called the Profile and Courage Essay Contest. Profiles and Courage, of course, was written by JFK, who also wrote a high school essay about looking up to Bernie Sanders. <laughs> now, the third place finisher with 20% of the vote was Minnesota Senator and Abby Cadabby's stepmom. <laughs> Amy Klobuchar, during her speech last night, Klobuchar laid on the Midwestern grit thick. My grandpa worked 1,500 feet underground in the mines in northern Minnesota. He had nine brothers and sisters, and he had to help raise them. He and my grandma saved money in a coffee can in their basement to send my dad to a two-year community college. My dad then became a newspaper man. My dad struggled with alcoholism. My mom, she was born in Milwaukee. My godfather was Bob Seeger. My, <laughs> my uncle died in the cheese mines from Cheddar Lung. My, my first grade teacher was a dairy cow. We <laughs> couldn't afford a TV, so we listened to the Vikings games on a radio we made out of beer bottle tops and green bean casserole. <laughs> I am Midwestern to the to the car. <laughs> New Hampshire also had some winners who won less than the actual winners. Coming in at fourth place was Massachusetts senator and music teacher telling the tenors, mm, I'm up here, I'm up here. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren. Senator Warren has not performed as well as she'd hoped or as we expected. So she comforted her supporters last night at her New Hampshire party by serving Swedish meatballs and brisket. That's a lot of meat. <laughs> Did they let her dog Bailey place the order? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> meat! <laughs> Ball! 
meatball. <laughs> Risket. <laughs> Is this a dog? Ruh <laughs> Right, right. Oh, garlic knots. <laughs> Just for me. The garlic Not again. I always forget the always garlic knots. Garlic One of the biggest non-winners was former Vice President Joe Biden, seen here taking a quick mid-sentence nap. <laughs> Get him while you can. Biden's lackluster performances have been a huge surprise, and now even Biden's own people are having a little trouble hiding their anxiety. One unnamed advisor told reporters, I know we're supposed to say we're going to win, but I just don't know. This is horrendous. We're all scared. It's not great when your campaign sounds like a Civil War letter home. <laughs> My dearest Jill, we fled New Hampshire after a miserable defeat and have retreated to make our last stand in South Carolina. I thought we could win, but I guess I'm just a lying dog-faced pony soldier. Now, yours, Joseph. Yours always. Last night was also the end of the Fury Road for some candidates, like Colorado Senator and Mom's new boyfriend who wants to get some coffee one-on-one -on -one just to get to know you better, bud. <laughs> Michael Bennett. After getting less than 1% in New Hampshire last night, Bennett promptly dropped out of the presidential race. This was shocking to all the voters who had no idea he had dropped into the presidential race. <laughs> Seems like a nice guy. Bennett waxed poetic about the state he just lost, saying, I love you, New Hampshire. Whether you knew it or not, we were having a great time together. I know. Bit of a creepy note to go out on, I gotta say. I love you, New Hampshire. Whether you knew it or not, I watch you when you sleep. The other dropout was tech entrepreneur and man specifying that he wants his food prepared by a chef who hasn't even handled cilantro. Andrew Yang which means Yang's now out of a job. You know what he could use? $1,000 a month. <laughs> Earlier today, today? Just today, the Democratic field lost former Massachusetts governor and man saying, wait, the guy with the most votes win? <laughs> Deval Patrick. So let's remove Deval Patrick from our array of Democratic candidates and... Oops, we never put him in. Uh... <laughs> Deval Patrick, get in there! Get in there, sir! There you go. Now, get out of there! Get out of there! We also have to say goodbye to Michael Bennett. He will be missed. Stop watching us, Michael Bennett! That's creepy! I'm gonna call the cops! Let's also say farewell to the man who warned us about the dangers of automation, Andrew Yang, and the robots have come for him. So long. So long, Mr. Yang. And Michael Bennett, get out of there! Get out of there, Bennett! Shoo! Shoo! Now, our current commander-in-chief hosted the president of Ecuador in the Oval Office today, which brings us to tonight's edition of... Chair Chat. With all the turmoil surrounding Roger Stone's sentencing, Trump tried to muddy the waters by claiming everybody else should be prosecuted. Where's Comey? Why, where is Comey? What's happening to McCabe? What's happening to Lisa and uh, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page? What's happening with them? Where's Waldo? Where in the world is, is Carmen Sandiego? What's the frequency, Kenneth? What's new, Pussycat? Who wrote the Book of Love? That guy should be in jail, the Book of Love guy. Who put the bop in the bop shi bop shi bop? Who put the damn in the jam and lemma ding dong? Dip, dip, dip. Now, for some reason, Trump was asked who he thinks the Democratic frontrunner is. Bernie looks like he's doing very well. Why is he serving? I think uh, people like his message. He's got energy. His people have energy. Uh, but they like his message. Yeah, yeah, they like it. What was Bernie's message again? We are going to unite together and defeat the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. He's right. A lot of people do like that message. We got a great show for you tonight.